Hey everyone, Disappointed Giant here. So welcome to part, I guess you could say this is like part two of the 5BC guide that I put out. And it's more of an expansion on that um, <laughs> than an actual like quote unquote new video. Um, and the reason why I'm putting this together is because I had recently been commenting uh, with the user named uh, General Dane who in their exact words, talking about getting to the end of the game, each run is way too damn long. And personally, I don't necessarily disagree with that. As some of you may know, the 5BC content is at the very end of the game after the Hand of the King. So in order to get to this content, you need to play through the enti an entire run, beginning to end. You know, whether you decide to go to Prison Depths or skip it, whether you decide to go to High Peak Castle or if you go straight from Giant to Hand of the King, you got to do the whole thing. And by the time you get there, you know, you're in-game timer might say something like 55 minutes or 50 minutes or an hour and five minutes or whatever it might be. But that's just the in-game timer, right? So it's not counting loading screens. It's not counting transition screens. It's not counting uh, mutation picking, shops, chest rooms, challenge rifts, all that stuff. So in real time, you might be looking at closer to like an hour and 20, an hour and 30, you know, and, and a buck and a half is, is a long time for, for a run in certain circumstances. So... Sometimes, you know, if folks are new to 5BC content, it's it can be nerve-wracking too, right? Especially if you've only gotten there once or twice or it's your first time in. I, at least from my own personal experience, I've been through that and have been like, oh my goodness, like I can't believe I'm here. And I felt like every step of the way, I was like one hit away, which is true sometimes, but one hit away from just having to do everything over again. And it reminds me of, like right now I'm playing Elden Ring, and it reminds me of some FromSoft games where I'm in a new area, I'm in a new castle, I'm in like a new cavern, I'm in somewhere, right? And I'm walking around with my shield up very slowly because I don't know what's ahead, right? So it can be kind of nerve-wracking to not see what's in front of you before you get there. So in the context of this video, um, I commented back and forth with General Dane a bit and just sort of asked, like, do you think a 5BC biome video would be helpful? Um, and they said yes, and I think it might be, right? So um, think of this as a, I don't know, like an addendum or an expansion of my 5BC um, tutorial guide that I put out. The footage here is the footage that I used for that. So you may notice and recognize uh, some footage because if you've seen that video, you've probably seen half of this video or maybe a little bit less, but either way, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that video up. I'm going to just kind of roll through. Uh, I'm going to let it play. I think it's like 10 or 12 minutes or something like that. Um, and I'm just going to be a little bit more in depth instead of scripting out the commentary. I'm just going to kind of roll with it and uh, talk about things as they come up, try to provide a little bit more in-depth commentary and insight into the biome and into what to expect so that way if you've made it there once or twice and you're a little bit anxious maybe this will help you feel more comfortable if you haven't made it to the 5bc biome but you want to kind of front load and get your backpack full of stuff before you head that way um, maybe this video will be helpful for you too so i'm going to stop rambling we'll get things rolling and with that we are off to a very spoiler heavy video obviously spoilers after this point so here we go All right, so here we are. We've made it to the door that is gonna bring us into the Astrolab. So personally, I love this biome. I love the colors, I love the music. I really enjoy the, the generation of it. I love the layout, I love the theme. But you know, to a, to a person who hasn't been here before or hasn't been here often, like it can be very intimidating. So hopefully this'll, this'll give you a little bit of a, little bit of a, a, a guide, a little bit of a, a more detailed map to, to help you through this section. So um, so here, right, one of the things I did want to talk about is the way the level's generated. So unlike most other levels, uh, it seems to me that the Astrolab has a lot of specific tiles and transitions that are only here. So you might see certain areas and certain levels that are reskinned, right? So you might see a hallway in the graveyard with a spike that you're also gonna see in the promenade. But in the Astrolab, you're not gonna see a lot of things that you've seen in previous levels, if that makes sense. The good news is that because, again, this is just my, my interpretation uh, based on all the times I've been here, um, could be wrong, but my interpretation is that, you know, because these 
pieces are present in almost all of the runs, like it might help you get a little bit more comfortable as you go through the level to be like, oh, I remember, I know there's a ladder here that comes down to a platform, right? Or I know that this is gonna transition up into a hallway that's gonna be a vertical ch a climb or whatever it is, right? So in every instance of the level, there is always one single chest that will have level 11 gear. And uh, I'm not following, for this save file, I did it for research, right? But my save file does not have 100% S rank on it. So um, I should probably watch some of my old videos and listen to myself talk about how important the forge is right now, <laughs> right? Um, but anyways, uh, so there's always one chest. You're always gonna get level 11 gear out of it. And just like any other chest, you know, it's not, might fit with your build, might not, might be recycled, whatever, right? But um, you do get you do get one shot on getting something good. And as far as other things, um, there are two shops. There's always one food shop, and there's always one skill or weapon shop. So you don't know what it's going to be. It's never consistent. Could be one or the other. Um, but regardless of whether it is a skill or a weapon shop, the quality is always going to be level 12. Um, as far as other generation stuff goes, um, I don't believe that the Astrolab can have a mimic shock a shop. I might be I might be wrong. It's never happened to me. I'm not. I haven't seen it in other people's videos. Um, I don't believe that there can be a mimic here, um, and there cannot be a curse chest. So you will you won't get an extra curse in here. And then yep, here we go. So here's here's the shop. So in this particular run, I ended up getting a weapon shop. I don't think I take anything. Um, my build here is is pretty strong. Um, yeah, you know, you got a colorless, colorless giant whistle, colorless punishment. I don't think I'm going to be taking that, <laughs> taking anything else out of that build. Um, all right, so here we go. So as far as the actual flow of the level, um, you've seen me kind of poke around, do some stuff, hit, a, hit, hit up the shop, whatever it is. Um, but the way that the level works is that there are two elites on the side of the level where you start then there's a little bit of a bridge you can see right there down where that scroll is almost um, on the right hand side there's a bridge that goes over to a tower there are two elites in this two elites in this part of the level and what you need to do is kill those two elites get the keys from them and then make your way down the tower oh, <laughs> oh my goodness i i forgot i almost just got destroyed there um i'm pretty sure i buy the food for gastronomy here right yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, good grief. Um, anyway, so you want to kill these elites, get the keys, and then you make your way over to the section over the bridge where the tower is. The elites are always going to be the same. There's always one failed experiment, which I killed earlier, and then here is the second one. There is always going to be one slammer. They're always going to be in the same rooms. The slammer is always going to be facing away from you. Um, you know, there's not a lot of... Um, randomness or there's no randomness when it when it comes to getting um getting through and, and killing those elites they could be anywhere in the level right that's where the randomness of the procedural generation comes into play but as far as the actual elites in the actual rooms those are all those are all going to be the same so i got the two keys here uh, so i made my way through the first half right the first part of the level and now we're making our way down the tower we're going to unlock a door at the bottom and then make our way up on the inside. The outside of the tower has uh, two types of traps. Um, so you're going to see those. Uh, there we go. So like these little turrets, um, they can be pointing downward. They could be pointing to the side. You're going to see those on the way down. And then there's also these lightning traps that are that are running horizontally across the screen, just like that one there. The reason those are there is so that way you can't just exit the tower and then slam down and avoid all the fights <laughs> so those those traps are just there to kind of keep you reined in um, but the turrets are going to be present um, both outside and inside and that's one of the reasons why um, especially for folks who haven't been here before um, or if that you're still getting comfortable with the level make sure you take masochist that'll cap your trap damage at 10 percent you can take a few extra hits and um, yeah that will extend the run right so here we go. So I have that first key, got the Allen key, I think is the one that, yeah. So the Allen key opens that door and that's what allows you to the inside of the tower. So we made my way down, making my way back up. Some of the, so this video is pretty short. I think it's only, what is it, 10 minutes? 
yeah, so I only got like another five minutes left. So I'm not going to go specifically into what each enemy does and how to avoid them and, and how to, you know, how to attack them and everything, um, because I do do that in my full 5BC tutorial. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the new enemies, um, I recommend checking that out. Everything's got timestamps in it, so you can skip down to that specific part. Um, but I, I did want to go a little bit more over like the structure. Okay, so as you know, so I'm heading up the tower, killing the enemies, and there's also doors, right? So I'm opening every door that I go to, so that way when I come back, I can, if I need to come back, I can use the teleporters on the side, I can make my way back in, and it's not going to be too much of a problem. I don't have to climb all the way back down or all the way back up or whatever it is. As I was making my way down, there was one scroll on the outside. Coincidentally, there was one scroll on the outside of the tower, one scroll on the inside. There are always two scrolls in this level. They are always dual stat. So there's a good chance that they're going to be off color and that you're going to get um, health instead of damage. But there you go. As you make your way here, so you open the door with the elevator key, and there's two slammers in there. So what I did, uh, and I'm sorry I didn't talk about this as it was playing, but I did a trick where you can go up, you aggro the uh, aggro the slammers, and then jump down or take the elevator down, and what happens is they will jump down after you, they'll hit the electricity, or they'll die from the fall damage, so you don't actually have to fight them. You can just go up there and fight them normally. Um, the, room, the room set up interestingly because it does have the as you note, there was like the middle platform, so there is two levels of horizontal uh, movement that you can have in there to kind of like kite them back and forth between the two. Um, so it's not super, super difficult, but sometimes, you know, if you've had a tough run or if you're, again, if you're making it here for the first time or second time, you don't need to have two elites <laughs> get in the way of you and your, you and your first or you were one of your earlier Astrolab victories, right? And this is sick. So this is the Thunder Shield blueprint. Um, again, I talk about this more in my full 5BC tutorial, um, but I believe that is a 100% guaranteed drop. So if you do not get any other blueprints, in the or any other item blueprints, not outfit blue blueprints, but if you don't get any other item blueprints, you will get the Thunder Shield. And then this here is optional. So this is another blueprint thing. Um, but what it is is that there's an air, a trap area down here and you can see that little key. It almost looks like a tiny little telescope. If you do choose to get this key, um, you're gonna be making your way down into this trap area. And this is always the same. Sometimes it faces the left, sometimes it faces the right, but the turrets are always in the same position. So you can see there's a safe spot here. Um, what you want to do is roll down, hold onto this wall, and then jump across. I will, <laughs> as you see, I almost, almost get destroyed there, but, uh, thankfully, Masochus kept me, kept me alive so I could make it down there. Once you pick up that key, it's called the Apex Key, and I'm going to go back to the main tower here, and on one side of the tower, there are spikes, and on the other side of the tower, there are not. So on the side that doesn't have spikes, see, there it is. So I see the spikes there, I know that's not the right side. On the, or it's not the correct side. On the side that does not have the spikes, you can wall run up, you do not need additional jumps off a necklace. All the jumps you can make here with your normal double jump. You just wanna make your way all the way up to the top, and then carefully get into this room and then unlock the door on the other side. And I don't know, <laughs> oh, I know why. Sorry, like I was mentioning, I used this footage for um, the 5BC video that I did, the full tutorial, and I think I didn't like the way I climbed. Yeah, so that's what it was. I was doing triple, double and triple jumps, so I went back to only do a regular jump so you can see that you can get here with anything. So you wanna get in this room, um, hit the middle, and then open that door. But as you see, when you open the door, you roll through it a little bit. So be careful of that turret. I got tagged by it, you might get tagged by it, but just be aware of it positionally. You hit the switch, and then that will drop the Sonic Carbine Blueprint down, which is a guaranteed drop if you get that Apex key. And that's it, right? So now, after this, <laughs> from here on, you make your way up to the tower, you go through the door, to the observatory and then you fight the final boss which i again i go into extensive detail in my uh 5bc full tutorial so um i know this video is a little short a uh, little bit off the cuff um i didn't actually really plan anything i just sort of sat down and started talking which 
as as some of you folks know i just do uh but hopefully at least having a full run through of the video with a little bit of extra commentary was helpful so um shout out to general dane for for the conversation and for for getting that idea in my head um hopefully this was helpful for for you and for everybody else um yeah that's it <laughs> that's it so uh, hope everyone's well thanks again for watching um Good luck in your runs. Good luck out there. I'll catch you soon.